We recently played Kanban, EV, and Weather Machine, which are obviously considered heavy games, so I think we're heavy gamers now? What's up everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Murph, and we are here to talk about what is ultimately the beginning of our descent into madness, AKA journeying into heavier games. Yeah, we've, been, we've always been kind of like medium to medium heavyweight gamers. A lot of the sure. games we like would fall kind of the medium heavyweight scale. But we've been wanting to get into heavier games, particularly Vita Lacerda games, because um, Vita Lacerda is known as a big heavy gamer. S sort of synonymous thematic. with the concept of really heavy yeah, thematic, thematic Euro, Euro games. games. Exactly, good, the good, good joint, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, so we want to play Vita Lacerda games. So we will say these are not technically our first Vita Lacerda games. We have played a couple before, but it's been a very long time. And we always play those at like convention settings, yeah. Where we're not able to just focus as well. And like the way for us to really understand if we like a game is for one of us to learn it and for us to play it together. Yeah. Which we have now done with Weather Machine and Kanban EV. And these were sent to us by Eagle Griffin Games. So thank you so much for Eagle Griffin. Thank you, Eagle Griffin. And they are they are supporting our journey uh, into, into this uh, wading into the waters of the heavy games. Yeah, so. <laughs> and so we wanted to start playing Vita Lacerda games because we always were like, I feel like we're going to like them. We just need to give them a proper try, which again is us in a, in a much more contained setting, one of us learning, teach the other one. And so yeah, this is kind of the, our start into a journey to being more, I guess, he playing some heavier games, because we've yeah. always wanted to, we just never get much of a chance to. Absolutely, so this video right here is gonna serve as kind of like first impressions of these games. We've played each of these games one time, so I can't claim to be experts and to really I mean, I formulate am. a proper review, played... but some first impressions and thoughts. Yep. Talking about what does it feel like to play these types of games? Do we like the feelings that these types of games elicit? Of course, Vito Lacerda is not the only person who makes heavy no. games, but like, again, we want to kind of get the initial feeling like, are we liking it? Do we want to play more? And where do we go from here? Yeah. Right? Yeah, totally. So let's just talk about it, man. Kanban EV Weather Machine. Let's give brief little overviews of what these games are and how we've liked them so far. Sure. So we played Weather Machine first. Um, I learned this one. And this is a game where you are uh, part of a, essentially kind of like a scientist team with um, Professor Latif. And you built these kind of cool weather machines. And you can actually control the weather. Cool that, but the, cool we, in, we before sort of you the learn about the repercussions bit. of it. Yeah, so basically yeah. like, oh, there's a really good sports game on. We want to make sure it's sunny. Let's work our machines to make sure it's sunny. Right. But then what we found out is that on the other side of the world, if we changed the weather here, it had like catastrophic effects over here. And right. then the more we did it, the worse things got. Yes. And the more we tried to fix it, the worse things got. So that's kind of like the prologue to the game. The actual game itself is the government has now stepped in, has given you a bunch of funding and basically said like, look, y'all caused this problem, but these weather machines are also the only way to fix this problem. And you're basically trying to get your weather machine up and going, start running some experiments on the big weather machine, yeah. and then try to like kind of mitigate the horrendous weather that's happening yes. on a different part of the And then planet. the government is is basically working their own weather yes. machine and doing their own tests side by side. And then we're also going out and trying to deal with the weather directly. And those Indeed. are kind of the different sections of the board. Yeah, exactly. That you're working yeah, on. Yeah, and so you're getting different resources, you're getting like machine parts, you have these cute little bots that you're putting in different parts I love the of robots. the board, and you have like chemicals, you have to do this kind of big resource management game. Uh, and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very, very, there's a lot going on. And this will be the kind of the theme for both of these is like, this is one of those games where like, you're gonna have to play it a couple times to, to, in my opinion, to get even remotely okay at it. Because oh, the for, first yeah, strategically, play, well, yeah. the first play of this, you're just like, I know what I can do. I have no idea what I should be doing basically. And, and or we, how to go about doing things in an efficient and yeah, you know. Or in the first game, and I will say for both of these, the first game it felt like you weren't getting that much done. Yes. But it's one of those games where you're also like, I know though each time I play this, I'll be able to get more and more and more done. Yes. Because you just understand how to work the engine better, how to work the system better, how to work the economy better. I feel like, speaking of this, jumping away from these to like Anachrony, which other people would, you know, people would also consider a heavy game. The first few times I played that, I yeah. feel like I couldn't do anything. And then I eventually got hold of the sort of resource engine that happens and was able to like, okay, now I have some a pile of stuff I can make use of. Yeah. It does take a couple goes. Yeah, so. indeed. Same, same thing. So like Kanban. So Kanban is a game where you're working in a factory. I love the theme of this one so much. Both of these are, are amazing themes. And this one, you're working in a uh, car factory. You're, you're manufacturing electric vehicles, yep. uh, which is the future of, of, uh, of driving about. Uh, and we are 
sort of constantly being evaluated by our <laughs> manager, Sandra, who's, uh, who's seeing how you're doing in different areas. We're trying to improve on the factory. We are getting designs for different types of cars. We are uh, going to logistics to get some car parts and stuff. We're using those car parts in the assembly line to poop out cars, get them on the test track, and then bring them to our garages for further testing, doing mm -hmm. some upgraded designs and trying to make the best vehicles we can. Yeah. Uh, and so we're all kind of working on this together where like we can both contribute to the upgraded parts of a truck or something like that, but we're each trying to be the best employee we can. And these are both similar in that way. You're both kind of jointly working on systems, yes. but you're trying to benefit from those systems the most. Yes, we're, yes, exactly right. Like we're all, we're all contributing to the same projects. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, this one you were working, you're going from different departments and stuff. You can't work uh, on the different days uh, in a row. You can't work the same department. So you're having to bounce around and kind of figure out the flow state of getting uh, your resources, those car parts and things like that, getting designs. Sometimes you spend the designs you know, to do upgrades. Uh, sometimes you spend them to get a car into your garage. And you're trying to do this all to be able to like, ultimately, and I love this so much, like participate well at meetings. You have like meetings at the end of the week and stuff, and you're like, you're to make, I've done stuff. You know? I've done stuff in my park. Yeah, so you're trying to say like, it's what I've got going. I got red cars in, in uh, my garage, and that's pretty cool. And you're trying to maximize your scoring there. Yeah. So, with both of these games, there's a bunch of. It's it's really about, and it, I think these are two good ones to start with because there are similarities here. Mm -hmm. Um, where it's about kind of figuring out the flow from location to location and what do you get over here and what benefits do you get and how do you use them at the next location. Weather Machine even goes further that when you go to a location, you get vouchers, which are effectively your resources for the next location in line. Yeah. So you really are kind of thinking in a flow state of like, I'm going to go from here and get some stuff and go over here and do an experiment. I'm going to go over here to R&D mm -hmm. and, and put some uh, chemicals out there and try to fix the weather and stuff like that. You know. Same thing here. There's kind of, and with Kanban, there's even a more linear flow where yeah. it feels like where it's like okay well i want to build some cars and stuff well i should probably get some designs for cars i need to get some parts for those cars then i'm going to produce some cars and bring those cars to my garage so there's yeah. a little bit of a linearness which i really enjoyed in combine yeah. which i wasn't able to as easily see and find in weather machine mm -hmm. which is not a knock on the game but it was one that like this one, uh, to be fair, and the, the, to full disclosure, I'm, ju I'm just the opposite. Nick learned Weather Machine and taught me. I learned Kanban and taught him. So we both are going to be a little bit more into and better with the game that we've read yeah. through. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. But um, yeah, so it's interesting. So with both these games, what kind of feelings came up? What for you, like, you know, going into heavy game, like, do you enjoy the feeling, the feelings that happen in this game? Like for me, there's a tension that's there where, especially in the something like Kanban, where you're being evaluated for your work and you're not, you that know, you start off on 15 Sandra points and you're going to lose mean. points yeah. in this game. You're going to lose mean. points. She's mean. Uh, and so in the early game, you're like, oh my God, I keep getting punished. How do I get, how do I get over the hump? You know yeah. what I mean? And, and trying to figure out the flow of like, oh, I want to get the car. I don't have designs. I need to get design. Okay. Yeah. And trying to get, figure out how to navigate this factory in an efficient manner. And I realized with both these games, there was definitely turns in Weather Machine in particular where I was just like, I am gaining science vouchers. Cool. My science voucher track is full. And I was just so inefficient. Yeah. And I was realized like that's a major thing. So I was feeling the stress of that of like, how do we eke out every little bit that I can out of a turn and not let stuff go to waste, not let overages happen that don't benefit you. Yeah. Uh, was a a stressful feeling. A stress was too strong a word. That's not not in a negative way, but you feel you the tension. Have, you have good stress. I think there's that's tense. Yeah. There's you know tension there, uh, and I felt those in this in these games, and it was interesting because I feel like a lot of the games we play that are more of a medium weight. Like of course you want to do do well. There's not like no tension in those games, but it's just the stakes are higher here. It felt like so yeah, that was kind of interesting. I think for me, like I really liked both of them, of course, but like it, it comes down to. Again, like we talked about, like the first time you play this game, or at least maybe just for us, I'm sure other people are like, I was great the first time I played it. Yeah. Um, but like, you're just not gonna kind of like, you're not gonna, like you said, you're not gonna be very efficient. You're not gonna be able to chain stuff together how you want. You're just not gonna be, able to be you're just not gonna be very good, frankly. Um, sure, yeah. And so what it comes down to for me is like, is the game intriguing enough for me to want to continue playing it to get better at it? Because certain games I'm like, oh man, I sucked at this, but I cannot wait to try it again. 
And some games are really good at that. Some games are not so great at that. These two, I will say, fall into that category for me, at least, where I'm like, I'm excited to try them again because I want to get better at them. They get, they get, they get the but hooks in you. You kind of got to know that going into it, that you, the first game, you're probably going to be kind of like, whoa. And like, and, you're just and, hanging on for dear life. Really? Basically, yeah. And you and you got to be able to channel that into wanting to play it more. Yeah. Because it can turn you off if you kind of... Because I've been in games where I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know why. I, I feel like I can't do... That's exactly, I feel like I can't do anything. That's what I kind of feel like in those games. Yeah. And in Conrad particularly, I really felt like... I was like, I feel like I can't do anything. Uh -huh. But again... Web machine I had a better ch time with with that part of it. But that's also probably because I learned it, so I just understood probably the systems sure. better and all this kind of stuff. And so yeah, I really liked it. But that's kind of with getting into like bigger games in general. It's like the first time you play them, you're probably not going to be able to work the system very well. And so you have to be prepared for that and be willing yeah. to continue on if you want to to get better at that. And for yeah. these two games, and I think most kind of big heavy games for the most part, I will be. We've recently played Obsession, which is not as heavy as these but it is a, a slightly bigger game and same thing where i was like man i feel like i didn't do this very well but i am so intrigued to keep trying it yeah and i think that's something that's really great about these games um is that <laughs> there can be some desperation in those first plays but i i didn't feel discouraged by them i wasn't like well there's nothing going on and this is a bummer and, yeah. and i don't want to play I, I wasn't left feeling that way, which was really nice. And one thing I can say for these games that are really great, uh, first of all, you know, Tool is maybe the best artist we have. So good. Like, just so good. Otherworldly, amazing. Um, the boards yeah. and all the components and things, first of all, are top notch, could not be more yeah. well designed. Even Griffin does not mess around. Yeah. But there's a clarity. Yes. I was just about to You have a game, or all these games, where there's a lot going on but the board is clear you can see easily what's going on they have really good player aids that reinforce the iconography you're seeing on the board so the rule books are really good yeah so it's something that like i am like sitting there struggling and don't know what to do and stuff but it's not because i can't remember how the game works it's because i don't haven't mastered the strategy part and being able to do something like that where you make a game that's big and heavy like this and i'm not going to do it well but it is navigable like I can, I can make my way through mm -hmm. the game is a, a feat, honestly, yeah. to be able to do that. And that's something that I'm like, that's really cool. And that's why I am encouraged to come back because I, you know, I was able to find my way through the game. I could find my way through it better next time. Now I'm a little more familiar yeah. with the path, you know? Um, and that's something that's just like a testament to like clarity of graphic design <laughs> is so important and that's why these things really shine. And they really do. I mean, you there's... can see in Weather Machine, you still you can easily see where the spaces yeah, are going are and how board. stuff works. Yeah. And it's a busy board, lots of art. Yeah. But it doesn't get in the way of, of knowing what is the important informational, mechanical stuff for the game, like where that stuff is, at least for us, very easy to still tell. It's very well laid out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of one of the main things for me, too, is like it's incredibly, the production, and not just even just like the quality of production, it's very high quality production, obviously. Eagle Griffin, like I said, doesn't mess around, but like the, the clarity on the board, the clarity of the iconography, the rule book is super, super clear and super well yeah. done. Great examples in the rule book. Yeah. Uh, despite it being a big game, it's a fairly easy learn, you know, for a big game sure, because sure. everything is so clear. And they do it so well. And so, yeah, I, I thought that part was really impressive how both games, I'm sure this is pretty true of all of them, are just so darn clear. Yeah, I think so. I think it, I think it does come down to um, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of, if you ultimately want to get an end goal that's over here, you have to do a lot of things along yeah. the way. Yeah. And so figuring that out and how to do that well is, I think, where the fun lies. Not It, it doesn't feel like an obstacle. It feels like the thing... That it makes the game exciting. Yeah, I totally so agree. So that makes me excited to return. So I guess two games in, two Lacerda's down. Uh, are you excited to try more? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely trying, excited to try these again. We need to play these. That's the other thing that's been great. Every Lacerda game we have played, we've only ever played one time. Yes. And all of them were three plus years ago. Yes. It'll be nice to have our hands on them to actually play these. Yes. <laughs> 
somewhat in well, quick succession. And, that's, <laughs> and, and you need to play them at least a couple times you do. in quick succession. To, one, to get the rules down to get better at the game. If you yes. wait, if we wait a year to play this again, we're going to be in the exact same boat. Yes, we got it. We got it. So I'm excited to try more, but I'm more excited to try these again because yeah, I want yeah, yeah. to, I don't want to just go on to the next one and be like, let's try Vinos now. Let's try Gallerus now. Let's try this now. Well, we play these now, so they're dead to us. They're dead to us, yeah. So I'm very excited to try the next ones and to keep trying these yep. and to get more into it because, again, we've always wanted to play Vita Lacerda games to get more into them. He has like a new game every year. Year pretty much, and there's so, one. There's inventions coming soon. Coming I mean, soon. This, this so, is the as of now, as of this recording, the newest the most current yeah. uh, Vital Lacerda game, but not for long. But yeah. So uh, what about you? I mean, you uh, seem I'm very excited. Super excited to return. Super excited. I I love the themes of both these games. Yeah, the themes. Kanban, are... uh, again, the one that I've learned and taught you, so I, it feels a little bit closer to my heart at the moment. Uh, is one I just think is a really cool theme. The theme of these are both really interesting. They provide really interesting uh, puzzles for you to solve. So yeah, I want to return to these and play them and try to actually get them down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then go on to the next one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fully excited to be at this point where we are in our hobby where the times we were playing these games before, it was really on the edge of our ability. Yeah. It was really out there. And believe me, it's still pretty far out there. But yeah. we do have three more years of having played board games and stuff, so these feel a little bit more, you know, in our happy zone for gaming. So uh, it's one that's really interesting and exciting. I, I don't think I could play these every single day, but I don't think they're meant to be played every single day. But I'm excited to play them often enough that we actually get them in our brain a little bit yeah. and start to really try to play them well. Yeah. So that makes me super excited. So, a couple things we want from you, dear audience. First of all, thanks for joining us on this journey. This is just the beginning of this journey. If you want to see us continue these, please let us know in the comments. Uh, we do plan to do playthrough videos of these and yeah. stuff. If you think this is really cool and you want to see Eagle Griffin uh, uh, continue to help us along this journey, let Eagle Griffin know that you're yeah. loving it and you want to see us play through them. It always helps us out. Uh, what do you think of Kanban EV and Weather Machine if you've played either or both of those games? Yeah. Let us know in the comments below. And what do you think our next Vital Lacerda game should be? Love my vote's Lisboa. Lisboa. My That's just me. My vote's Vinos. That's pretty good, too. But let us know what you would want to see us uh, tackle next, and uh, we'll get to these playthroughs in short order. But this is just the beginning of our journey into heavy gaming. And sure. uh, go along with us for the journey. Yeah. All right? All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that quick little discussion video. Mike? Yeah. Yep, Mike said so. Hey, thank you so much for watching that quick discussion video. Again, down in the comments, let us know what Vita Lacerda game you'd like us to play next or just what big heavy game you'd like us to play next because we are definitely interested in breaking our brains in that way. I want to give a big shout out to our channel sponsors, Restoration Games, Lucky Duck Games, and Board Game Geek. I want a big shout out to you for watching this video, you butt.